Do you want to lead? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're live, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We just did the first uh, 30 minutes of this conversation on uh, Andrew Gold's channel, On the Edge with Andrew Gold. And we are continuing here. By the way, uh, we, we'll wrap up sort of what we're talking about at some point, and then we will do questions just so everybody knows. So what I wanted to start with here is that, um, and maybe we can do a little bit of a recap because it's not we're not talking to all the same people. Um, but, you know, hmm. uh, when Katie Holmes made her great escape from the Tom Cruise marriage in 2012, uh, the fact that she was able to put all of the pieces required in motion and execute this thing all while having her life completely infiltrated with Scientology spies um, shows not, not only what an incredible job she did and with the guidance, certainly, of her father, but how important she felt this was right like you have you have the cause and the effect and you can see the amazing work that she did to orchestrate the escape but in order for her to have the desire and the commitment and the dedication and the drive to make that happen and make it happen as smoothlessly and, and seamlessly as it occurred it's sort of a reflection of how horrible things were for her in her life and how horrible she saw that they could get not only for her but for Surrey. And, you know, I think when I said earlier that Katie probably had a whole laundry list of dirt, not only on Tom, but even more so on David Miscavige, this is sort of what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like where our bodies hidden. I'm talking about the things about David Miscavige and his involvement in Tom's life that would make life so unbearable and, and suppressive and restrictive that it would almost force Katie to completely escape from Tom, from Scientology, and to save Surrey. That's really more what I mean. It's pretty remarkable to even consider. Well, I think one of the things that, in fact, if we want to just have one thing we didn't touch on last time, I think, is that Nicole Kidman, Tom's previous wife, famously lost contact with her kids for several years. So that must have been playing on Katie's mind. 100% I agree with that because, you know, Connor and Isabella, who are Tom's adopted children, they had a decent relationship with Katie. I mean, Katie was with Tom for six years, right? Uh, it was it was about six years. Um, and it, she would have seen firsthand how Connor and Isabella talk about Nicole, treat Nicole, uh, how little consideration and regard they have for her and, or time they spend with her. And she would see this is the this is what it looks like this is what being married to tom cruise and having kids with tom cruise looks like this is where it ends up and um uh yeah he, uh, totally aside from people spying on katie and not having you know people she can confide in just just seeing the the destruction that scientology had on the relationship between nicole and connor and isabella that alone probably would have been enough grounds for Katie to start making planning a great escape oh absolutely absolutely and, and th this is this is the thing I mean it, we, I, I said last time again that that it's been called one of the greatest legal triumphs of the century this was Katie's um so I'm bumping into the microphone this was Katie's father who's a you know matrimonial lawyer practices a matrimonial law and he's supposed to be a top top lawyer she had to get lawyers in de different states one thing that we didn't mention as well is that she um they pushed to get the law the 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 case tried or whatever in uh, New York, because in California, judges tend to give apparently uh, uh, joint custody of children, whereas in New York, apparently it's more common to give sole custody. And she really wanted it. Now, you have to wonder why she, you know, uh, obviously every every group of parents are different. Every, you know, uh, my parents got divorced, but they're very friendly. I'm very fortunate in that sense. And they could all hang out together uh, to want sole custody. There must have been a lot of weird stuff going on. And, and like I was saying before, I just wish we could really hear it from her what you know the truth of everything yeah and it would be my best guess that the reason she insisted on having sole custody is because of what she saw happen with connor and isabella and nicole and and knowing that if there was any scientology influence whatsoever if tom was able to influence surrey with scientology it would be specifically to the effect of destroying the relationship between surrey and katie yeah
No, absolutely. And then they got well, so they got it done in ten days. Got there, got got sole custody of Suri, and then he hasn't seen her for ten, twelve, ten years. So yeah, since just, 2012, so, right? And yeah. you know, back well, back to the shared custody thing. And I'm no expert. I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. But like, if you have joint custody, then you're talking about also joint relationships between schooling, uh, joint decisions with schooling and, and things like that. And I think with 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 Katie having sole custody, she's able, uh, like, let's say, Tom, like Tom has ten days of visitation per month per the agreement. He doesn't use them, but just because he has visitation, he would not have any say whatsoever in her schooling or uh, put. You know, he would not be allowed to put her into a Scientology course or a Scientology auditing just because he's exercising visitation. I think that was probably one of the reasons for wanting sole custody was so that Tom yeah. couldn't exert any influence in having Surrey do Scientology. I'm just trying to think, did Tom Cruise move on to someone else after Katie Holmes? Is, I've, I haven't, has he been with anyone else? So not publicly, meaning he has not publicly affiliated, associated himself with any particular women. I, I do tend to believe the tabloids when, when you read something about him going on a date with this co-star or that co-star. I tend to believe those reports because hmm. I don't think Tom would just casually be seen out on the town with a female co-star unless it were a date. That's just my personal feeling on the matter. Sure. sure. Um, but then Tom would have to stop short of call, officially calling it something because when the woman finally runs for the hills you would have to mm -hmm. chalk up another one in, in the l column <laughs> man again so wouldn't you just love to be a fly on the wall when they're having these conversations because obviously there was a there was a period in the mid 2000s where tom cruise's sister became his uh, publicist uh and started sort of letting him loose a little bit and he had those famous interviews with peter overton uh and and uh what was Low lowry matt lowry matt, matt lowry uh, uh, Lauer, Lauer, sorry, who who was disgraced himself, I believe, later um, for other things. Um, and, you know, the search for Tom Cruise's girlfriend, which is just the most embarrassing thing, this thing where he was telling Mike Rinder, oh, why can't I get a girlfriend? And they had to all go and find him a girlfriend. Nazanin Boniardi was the first one, and then it was Katie Holmes. And now it's got to be a bit like, look, Tom, you're just embarrassing us. So <laughs> you're on your own, mate. Like, go, if you can't find it, if you're Tom Cruise, one of the richest, most famous quite handsome you know everything in the world you can't find a girlfriend then you know it's time to look inwards tom no <laughs> i mean he's no andrew gold but he's got some ah. things going for him uh come now come now he's no aaron smith levin but he's pretty cool that tom cruise guy <laughs> so here's the thing you know i feel like if if it weren't for david miscavige tom cruise could pro would probably have no problem finding a girlfriend but it's like mm. how how long do you have to be going out with a non-scientologist before you're like hey let me introduce you to my buddy the head of the scientology cult david miscavige like <laughs> it's so much baggage associated with all of that David will be accompanying us to bed. Uh, he will be coming with us everywhere. He will just be sitting in the corner and ensuring that nobody accidentally says well done at any point. Because apparently that is the thing that gets Tom Cruise. You know, if you say well done to Tom Cruise, you're going to be on your knees with a toothbrush scrubbing the corners of the bathroom within five minutes. No, Tom Cruise is like, nobody says very well done to me except David. <laughs> And, you know, like there, there was that period, of course, in the mid 2000s, Tom, Tom was doing these weird interviews and there was that guy who squirted him with water in the face. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> so that, look, that's a bad thing to do to anyone because it could be acid. It could be any, whatever it could be. It's not a nice thing to do. Um, however, why didn't people just say well done to him? If people knew they could have said, Tom loved the film Mission Impossible 58. Well done. Very well done. They would have, very, that would have killed him. Very well done. He said, nobody squirts me in the face other than Dave. <laughs> um, let, let me take this question. Do you think there's anything to the rumor that Tom is sterile and Surrey is not his? So I, I have to take responsibility for this rumor. So here's the thing. Mm. I've never said that Surrey isn't his. What I've said, now there's these things. Okay, so when I have chats with Mark Headley, Mark Headley knows things that were common knowledge, which means they were not, uh, like if Mark Headley tells a story, Mark Headley was never anybody's auditor. He was never their case supervisor. He was never their ethics officer. If Mark Headley has information about something, it's something that was commonly known because it was gossiped about and people spoke about it. In other words, it's not protected, confidential, priest-penitent information. 
Mark Headley and other people from the int base have simply told me casually in conversation that it was sort of common knowledge that Tom couldn't have kids. Now, that's not to say he didn't have Surrey. People, people can have st st uh, sterility or, or fertility problems and they're not permanent or they're not always there or whatever. I'm not, I never meant to actually say Surrey wasn't his. I meant to say, I'm surprised no one has, there's so many stories that exist in the Scientology world that get a lot of airtime. That one had never gotten any airtime. And the truth is, I only put that video out because my videos, I, I, I got the impression my channel might have been shadow banned. And I'm like, okay, let me do this video about Tom Cruise and see if my, my channel's really shadow banned. Well, it turns out mm. my channel wasn't shadow banned. And I took a lot of shit behind the scenes for making that stupid video. So um, do I think there's any truth to the rumor that Tom is sterile? Yes. Uh, there might be some truth to it. Does that mean that Surrey is not his? No, it doesn't mean that. But I do want to make this comment. Some people have said to me, how dare you put something like that on the internet? What if Suri saw that? It would destroy her. I go, wait, 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 wait. It would destroy Suri more if she heard a theory that maybe Tom wasn't actually her biological father. Destroy her more than the fact that the person that she thinks is her biological father has completely disowned her and discarded mm -hmm. her like trash. One of these things is worse than the other, and I don't think it's the one where Tom isn't the biological father. Anyway, I, I can't say this enough. I'm not saying it's true. It's just a you know something that's out there. I don't want to. Yeah. So yeah, I think you know what's a funny thought because, and I only realized this recently that the two of us, and I don't mean this in a bragging way. It just it just is a fact. When you type Tom Cruise into YouTube, we're very high up the videos that we've. <laughs> done so it's more than possible that i mean most actors and celebrities and things do research their own names so what a thought this is i don't know if you've given this much thought but not just him but katie and Suri might be tuned in right now just watching us and i would just also say if anything pisses off Suri, it's probably the fact that whenever anyone says her name people's iphones start buzzing and and replying because it's you know that's got to drive her crazy. Imagine that oh going your my. whole life with a name that, you know, what's it's like being called Alexa, I suppose. I wonder if there's any Alexas in the chat today. Don't, you can't. Oh, I've got my earphones in. So, OK, no, no, our devices will hear you speaking. <laughs> Yet that is really funny. I never thought of that. They could be watching That's, us. I'd um, be surprised well, if they hadn't. I would be surprised as well. Um, I got in trouble for something I said about the Danny Masterson trial because someone who I never in a million years dreamed huh. was watching these videos is watching these videos. So yeah. I do have to be a little careful. Um, okay, so let's see. Jay Dice, I would love to ask Katie if Tom was allowing Scientology to begin efforts to indoctrinate Surrey. I know she was at that age, uh, but have you heard of specific efforts that were made? Oh, this is a great question. This is a great question. I haven't heard this discussed very much. In fact, I've only heard this discussed in the context of Surrey was getting to the age where you get officially indoctrinated into Scientology. There's no such age. There's no such age. A lot of uh, your level of indoctrination or introduction obviously has to do with whether you can freaking read and write. I mean, if you can't read, how much Scientology can you be exposed to? So I think what's really being referred to there is she was getting to the age where she was probably able to understand enough and read enough to start doing the most entry level courses uh, like children's courses. However, mm -hmm. there's other ways to indoctrinate children into Scientology, and it has to do with things. They call them various assists. Assists is Scientology's. It's almost like hands on faith healing like. It's funny you don't okay. hear you don't hear a lot of details about this discussed, right? right? Um, so there's something called a touch assist, so or a locational assist. Let's stick with locational for a moment. Let's say you've got a headache, or you're just sad, or you're sad and you have a headache. I'd be like, yeah. Andrew, who told you? <laughs> <laughs> I say, okay, let's go, let's go for a walk, and we would just right. walk around. I'd be like, okay, look at that tree, thank you. Look at that bird, thank you. Look at that tree. It, uh, it, we might do this for thirty minutes until you tell me that you actually feel better. Um, that's a very small thing, nothing crazy going on there, but that is Scientology. And if you're doing that on a child, like if, if, if Surrey was being raised in a family, almost everything that went wrong with Surrey would have been handled with an assist. Okay, another example is a contact assist. Let's say you fall down and you whack your knee and it hurts and you're crying. Okay, Tom would come over, uh, just like he would if he saw someone in a car accident because only a Scientologist can help. And he would go, okay, show me where it happened. Okay, show me how it happened. And you'd have go, like go through the exact motions and steps of how it happened and touch your knee 
back to where you hit it light, lightly. And you would do it over and over and over again until you said it no longer hurt and you felt happy. So that's a contact assist. A touch assist would be, let's say, uh, I don't know, you, you had a slight cold or something. So you would sit in a chair and this is, um, uh, Mark Headley made a joke about this, about feel my finger the other day. And literally, let's say you're sitting in a chair and I'm going, okay, we're going to do a touch assist, start of assist. And I would say, feel my finger. And then I would touch you like here and you go, okay, I feel it. I go, thank you. Feel my finger and then feel my finger and feel my finger up and down the body, both sides. And honestly, you just do this until the person says they feel better. Now, eventually, once you've been subjected to enough of these, you just realize this is never going to stop until you say you feel better. So you just say you feel better at yeah. right about the time that you're probably falling asleep. You're like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay. But like this would be the lowest levels of Scientology indoctrination. Interesting. Well, that's it. And so because I was just gonna say, I, I've spoke to someone today uh, who I've got come on the podcast soon, who was, you know, in, grew up evangelical and and in Pentecostalism. Uh, I think I've said that wrong, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and she, she and that actually proves my point that literacy illiteracy was part of the reason she believes Christianity grew to such an extent and some of the teaching of the Bible grew to such an extent because people couldn't actually read it and she sort of she reels off a bunch of things that people think are true about what the Bible says and the Bible says a different thing but no one's read it uh, so I guess with those sort of mind tricks that you're talking about I guess she could have gotten into it Suri or any child uh, before before being able to read 100 percent mm. and even introducing ideas about like um the Thetan or affinity reality communication, just basic Scientology concepts. So it's not necessarily that, that you know, Surrey was about to hit this key pivotal age. There, there's no like, <laughs> I mean, there's no Scientology equivalent of a bar mitzvah where you, uh, uh, you know, hmm. where you officially, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, well, well uh, th it's a bad analogy because that's not, you're officially becoming a man at a bar mitzvah. There, there's, yeah. uh, or do you, like, there's nothing in, there's no you're ceremony. But, Little did so, they know, it took me another few years. <laughs> so is there, I'm curious now, because I know in, in either Catholicism, there's, um, there's a confirmation, there's, what is, there's something where you're officially a Catholic. I'm, gonna, I'm bastardizing this all to death because I don't know any of this stuff. Is there an equivalent in Judaism where now you're officially a, a full member of the, the Jewish community? Mm. My understanding is that you are, you are born that way, providing your mother is Jewish. It's passed down through the mother. Uh, the, and as you say correctly, a bar mitzvah is, is becoming a man, a Jewish man. I don't know. You can also have one. And I'm not sure of the age, so someone's going to correct me, but you have one when you're 13. For girls, it's when they're 12. Well, that, that's sort of a more modern thing. A lot of girls didn't get that done. And now that, you know, to, for equality of, of, the, of the genders. Uh, but you can have one when you're like, I think it's 81. You have another one. So I don't know oh, if that's really? becoming a, like a boy again or something or like becoming closer to the end of being a man. I'm not sure what that celebrates, but you can have a second bar mitzvah. You know, Scientology would be a lot more fun if there was some sort of official ceremony to become a real Scientologist. Uh, oh, yeah. In fact, Presents should, and stuff. <laughs> they should come up with something. I mean, they're infatuated with be, looking as religious as possible. They should really come up with something like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so Suri, what was she six, six years old is still incredibly young to start doing even child's Scientology stuff. And at mm -hmm. that level, it's so kind of innocuous, like some communication drills. And it's like you can only do so much with little children. So I really think that Katie's what would have motivated it isn't like, oh, my God, she's about to embark on some child auditing program. I think it was. Look at Connor and Isabella. Look how their relationship has been utterly destroyed by Scientology with, with their mother. Look how they actually seem to hate her. Look at how they think she's condemnable. They think she's suppressive. I don't want to live in a world where my daughter even has a possibility of thinking that of me. You yeah. know? No, absolutely. And I don't know much about Katie's family and upbringing, but my understanding is that uh, it's a close family. I don't know if it's a big family, but I think she's very close with her parents. Mm -hmm. And I think she could just see the complete depersonalization and dehumanization that, that occurred within the Tom Cruise family, um, that nothing was more important than Scientology. And so you have her experiencing this horrible quality of life, having her husband's best friend be the leader of a freaking cult and everyone's spying her on all the time. 
And then you add on top of that, uh, you know, looking five years down the line and, you know, seeing what could happen with Surrey. I mean, either one yeah. of those things would have sparked an exit from Scientology. Let me see. There's something here. Is Scientology for or against childhood vaccines? If they are in Scientology private school, do they mandate vaccines? This is a funny one. L. Ron Hubbard and his propaganda tended to definitely be anti-medicine, but more because he thought Dianetics was the latest and the greatest and, um, and, and had the ability to fix everything. Like Scientologists definitely are more reluctant to seek out medical interventions as a primary, as a primary intervention, but it's not against the rules to seek medical intervention. And I guess I'm giving a long winded answer to explain Hubbard never said, don't get vaccines, but because of the, because of the anti-medical establishment culture that exists within Scientology, there is also a very high incidence of anti-vaxxerism in Scientology, even though Hubbard said almost nothing on the subject. So you'll find Scientologists very split on this. And in fact, this is where it gets really crazy. Most public Scientologists are completely against uh, the current vaccine. We all know what I'm talking about. Whereas David Miscavige mandated that all Sea Org members get the vaccine or they were put into forced isolation until they relented and agreed to get the vaccine. Not only that, they were ordered to lie to the public Scientologists about it and say that they had not received the vaccine. So Miscavige is on like a completely different page on at least this current thing that we're talking about, the, you know, because because uh, 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 this current vaccine is also tends to be somewhat of a different conversation than vaccines in general. Like mm -hmm. I know people who are against vaccines in general who are actually in favor of the current vaccine. It's really a mixed bag in Scientology. And I guess that's kind of where I'm going with this is you do get a mixed bag because Hubbard didn't have hard and fast rules on this subject. And I can tell you that in private Scientology private schools, there's no mandates for anything. There's no pre-requirements. I mean, you could have no shots at all and, and you're fine. Um, mm. Isn't it fascinating when religions and cults and things have to sort of adapt to the modern world and then there's no, there's nothing said about it. So, you know, the, again, I think of any old religion that nowadays has to deal with things like electricity. Is that allowed? Is that considered work on a Friday or a Saturday when you're not supposed to be doing it and things like that? And weird how they have to keep up with it. So I suppose vaccines is just another one. Yeah. I got to tell you, for a group that's considered to be very heavily anti-vax, uh, Scientology right now in the C organization is just... Um, just exhibiting crazy behavior. I mean, Andrew, we're here. I'm in Clearwater, Florida. I mean, Florida has been wide open, wide, wide open for over two years now. The Sea Org mm. members still walk around with masks and their plastic lunch lady gloves. Yeah, I saw that. I saw you tweet about it. And I said to someone else, and I can't remember who that was now, but I said, oh yeah, Aaron. Oh, it was Tony Ortega. And I said like, Aaron, because I said, can you recognize the Scientologists in the courtroom? for the Danny Masterson case. Uh, and he was just like, uh, well, you know, t Tony doesn't give much away. You know, he's very, very quite straight. And he was just like, well, sometimes, sometimes not, you know, just like that. But I was thinking of your tweet of all these guys wearing gloves and, and things. That so. would actually be a reason why a Scientologist would be not very inclined to attend the trial unless it's a Scientologist who isn't currently on course or getting auditing. Like if you're just a Scientologist and, and you're not currently getting course or getting audit, uh, uh, doing a course or getting auditing, you don't have to do this stuff. You don't have to do the masks and the gloves. But if hmm. you are actively on course, especially here in Clearwater, you have to wear those things whenever you leave the base, whenever you leave the base. Uh, oh. so, 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 so you might get a Scientologist in the courtroom but you wouldn't know because they probably would send someone who's not on course uh, so that they wouldn't have to go wearing the gloves so that you wouldn't know it was them. Right, right. Do, hey, do, we, do we know when that case is going to be finished? Is it, it's after Thanksgiving, they said. It must be back on. Today, court is back in session and check it out. Oof. Two jurors came down with COVID. So they swapped them out with two alternates. Hmm which means jury deliberations are essentially starting over effective today. They no longer consider that they're in day three of deliberations. They consider that today is day one. Okay. Okay. So we'll know more in a few days, perhaps. I mean, yeah, I don't even think we'll know by the end of today if they're still quote unquote deadlocked, because how would they even know it's the first day of deliberations, technically speaking. 
Um, I think that's good. I think that's good for the plaintiffs. But I'm going to be doing a live stream later today uh, with my uh, good lawyer friend, Zach. So, and that should probably be around 4.30, hopefully. So that's in about 90 minutes. So if you're watching this now, tune back in in about 90 minutes to um, hear about what happened today in the, in the Masters. Mate, you are a behemoth. You do not <laughs> stop. People, give him some love. Throw him some whatever. Give him all the likes and stuff because, man, this guy works so hard. He is an inspiration to, to all of us. I mean, I'm an inspiration to him because I work even harder, but he really is a hardworking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we've covered everything we wanted to cover. Was there any, anything else you wanted to ask me specifically? I was, I was just going to say, honestly, I really mean this about that point I was saying, I believe, and I was looking up Suri Cruz just now, um, while you were talking, I was listening to you as well, but I was just looking her up. She's 16 now. Um, and I know my sister's 15 and I know what 15 year old and 16 year old girls do, right? They are on YouTube. That's it. So surely she types her own name and surely she's watching this right now, either live or as a repeat. And if she is, I, I would like to say to her, firstly, I do apologize, you know, if, if any of this is hurtful or anything like that. And send, send me and Erin an email. And if you do, and if you, you know, we're journalists and all that. So if, if you say like, this is off the record, we won't repeat any of it. I, you know, I'd be intrigued to hear from you anyway. Uh, you're always welcome to email us anything we anything you say honestly because she might she must be watching this yeah i don't know you know i got a 16 year old a 14 year old and a 12 year old and they don't watch youtube i found out <gasps> i was i was shocked what i was like they do it's all snap it's all snapchat yeah. and TikTok. studying the bible <laughs> it's all snapchat and t and tiktok mostly yeah we um, need to get on snapchat and tiktok if we want suri to email us not that i know why i would even want that or where that would go but it would just be <laughs> intriguing wouldn't it to wake up in the morning and it's like oh suri's just sent me and erin an email whether it be angry or thankful or wanting to set the record straight i would just be fascinated to get that email true or very Katie. true so real quick on this one are connor and isabella's biological parents sea org members do you reckon i for me, that could go either way. Um, mm. I don't know. I feel like Tom and Nicole at that time would probably be more inclined to want to go through the most legitimate medical system possible. You, like just using a Sea Org member is a pretty amateur wayish of deciding, you know, who the donors are going to be. Like, who cares that they're a Sea Org member? A Scientologist might care, but that seems pretty amateur hour to me. I, 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 I would lean more in the direction of completely use the most expensive professional medical service out there and not just going, hey, do you know any good Sea Org members? So that's going to be my guess on that one. Um, and hold on, I saw just um, one more. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Fabian, Andrew, this is the power of the baldness. Um, okay. <laughs> what does that good. even mean? Like, is I he bald know. as well? Uh, yeah. he I would just say... I saw I did say someone, someone in a comment said, don't ask a 16-year-old girl to, to send you an email. I, such is my innocence that that hadn't even crossed my mind. But good point. Can Katie please get in touch then and tell us how angry or delighted she is about our coverage? There you go. There you go. Thank you, Andrew and Aaron. You, are, you both are ahead of Tom. You both are taller. Well, Andrew's probably a whole... How, you, did you say 6'4"? Yeah. Did you see my lawyer friend Zach is six seven, three hundred pounds? I get I get so funny when I see people taller than me. I I'm like, what else going on here? I don't like this. It's unusual <laughs> as tall person. But I mean, three hundred pounds is that a lot? I don't know what that is. I don't know what. Oh, what do you use? Pounds. What do you use? Stone or kilos? Oh, both. Well, kilos recently. So I and I'm I'm ninety kilos, and he's okay. So he's one hundred and thirty six. So he's like one and a half of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I'm like two twenty five wow. right now, but I'm a little I'm about twenty pounds heavier than I than I should be right now. Two twenty five so, kilos. No, two twenty five. But I wouldn't two twenty five. <laughs> you'd, you'd be uh, you'd be like officially obese, right? So you're a hundred. Yeah, I was a hundred a couple of months ago, and then I found out about us this multi level marketing platform. No, I didn't really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, played football. So wait, so what? What are you at kilos right now? Kilos? No, that's what I meant. Kilos? I am nine. T. Oh, so you're taller than me and lighter than me. I'm 198 
pounds. Yeah, but I went on a big diet the last... I mean, I was joking about the MLM, but I went on a big diet the last uh, uh, two months, stopped eating as much chocolate and so, and started playing a little bit more uh, football. Every, I, I, every... Was, I, I was heavier than you are now, slightly. And, and people can see, if you go back through my videos, look at my videos from about three months ago, and you really see that I've got this sort of chubby face. Yeah. Just before COVID, I got into the best shape of my life, and that was just two and a half years ago. And then, ah, it's hard to keep it up because it's boring. It is boring. We got a family. We got a big family vacation scheduled uh, in a few months, and so I'm I'm at like T minus one hundred and three days to get down to my target weight, and it's just Mm. it's so difficult. It's man, just just like one less thing a day that you eat, and then that's it. Yeah, every night I rededicate myself. to my diet and then uh, every morning i uh, fall off the wagon so but we'll figure it out yeah. we'll figure it out we'll get there all right everyone we'll stop rambling on about um diets and everything thank you for joining us and as soon as we figure out what our next chat will be about um we'll schedule it oh yeah and i uh, talk to you yeah. guys soon oh and Thanks. check out the first part remember of this Epi- yes, what, what part episode? one of this conversation is on andrew gold's channel on the edge with andrew gold go subscribe to him if you have not already and yeah. uh, his channel's yeah. been blown up. He has fantastic content over there. Oh, thank you. Oh, and like this video. Everyone do everything <laughs> for us. Do things. We love you. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great day.